Good day! I'm Dr. T and welcome to my office. Uh, so today I would like to talk about optics. And optics is a field of studying light and how light interacts with things. Okay, so to think about optics, typically we're going to be thinking of light as a wave in this particular category. Remember, light is kind of quirky and it kind of broke physics, but we're kind of, we're good with it now. Okay, so we're thinking of light as a wave and waves have uh, four fundamental properties to them. They have their amplitude, uh, which would be how intense the light is, uh, their speed, which is how fast it's moving, their frequency, and their uh, wavelength. Now, frequency and wavelength multiplied together get you the speed. So as long as, well, one of them is fixed, then the other two are set in a ratio to each other. Uh, amplitude is not going to play a huge part of this story, although, it, you know, it is, of course, important. In the particle form, amplitude is just simply how many light packets you have, how many photons. Okay, so while light is traveling, if it's traveling in an absolute vacuum, it's traveling at the speed of light, because it's light. We're really original at naming things, aren't we? Uh, which is usually given the abbreviation lowercase c, and is 3 times 10 to the 8th meters per second. However, if there are electrons and other things around it, those will have magnetic fields. Light is a magnetic field, essentially. It has one slash is one. Um, and those will start interacting and do some really weird quantum things. That... Now, I'm not going to get too deep into quantum physics because it's quite the rabbit hole to jump into, both quite deep and it gets about as weird as following a white rabbit that keeps saying that it's late for a very important date. Uh, now, when we look at light, uh, it's able to interact with the magnetic environment around it, and in doing so, it will slow down. Uh, as it slows down, this is going to have some fairly important consequences. Most notably, that if it hits a thing that's causing it to slow down straight on, it's just going to keep going in its same path. Nothing changes. But if it hits at an angle then the thing that it hits is going to slow it down, but in the process it's going to turn. And it's going to what we call refract. Uh, by refracting, you have now changed the path of the light, and this can be quite useful for us. This is the core of optics. How do you bend light to get it to go where you want it to go? Okay, so the first concept is uh, what we call optical density. Things that have higher optical density are able to slow light down more than other things. Uh, you can actually see this very practically if you wear corrective lenses. So if you go into the uh, eyeglass place, uh, you get a choice of lens materials. You'll notice some of them are lighter weight, thinner, uh, and just overall less, but they still work. These are going to have a higher optical density. If you have something with a low optical density, then the light has to hit it at a pretty significant curve. Your glasses are going to have to have a lot of curve to them. If, however, it has a much higher optical density, then the angle the light hits, as long as it's not square on, is going to have much more of a bend to it than it would on something that has a lower optical density. Therefore, you can have a much uh, thinner pair of glasses because they don't need to curve as much to get the same effect. Now, depending on what your prescription is, your glasses will have different curves to them. Uh, this is actually a very refined art uh, in actually making the, the glasses. Uh, but generally speaking, when you're looking at uh, doing optics, you're looking at lenses that have one of two predominant properties. They either curve out, what we call a convex, or curve in, what we call concave. If you start drawing arrows and you look at how light's going to bend, convex lenses are going to cause light to bend in, what we call focus, towards a point, what we call a focal point, and thus all of the light rays are going to come together. Concave lenses are going to do the opposite. Uh, they're going to curve inwards, kind of like a bowl, and they're going to cause light to spread out. Now, depending on what you want to do, depends on which type of lens you're going to go with. Uh, also, depending on your medium, depending on the angles you go for, uh, you can spread your light out into different wavelengths, 
because each wavelength will bend slightly differently depending on the material and the shape of it that you're looking at. And since they bend differently, uh, if they are mixed together, what we see in white light, then they will spread out into a spectrum. This is assuming your light goes through your material. If it does, then we call this transparent. Now, it's wrong to say some things are transparent and some things are not, which would be called opaque. Opaque is the light does not make it through. It stops it. Just about everything is transparent to some parts of the uh, spectrum and opaque to others. Now, there are definitely things that are opaque to just about everything. A nice block of lead, that's going to stop basically all light from going through it. Uh, your glasses, uh, especially if you got, like mine, these are transition lenses. Um, yeah, they're a bit extra, but they're, they're kind of nice. Uh, these are actually intentionally meant to be very transparent for the visible spectrum of light, but they are opaque due to the uh, small amount of silver that's within them to ultraviolet light. Therefore, they add a little bit of protection, although mostly it's, hey, instant sunglasses, yay. However, I'm driving and there's no ultraviolet light to trigger the sunglass thing. Ah, great. Anyways, uh, so when you have something, if the light of the frequency that you're dealing with, uh, so your frequency slash wavelength, uh, once again, what we would think about as color, but not strictly color, uh, is able to go through something that's going to be transparent. If it's not, then that substance is opaque to that particular frequency. Apart from giant block of lead, yeah, there's not a lot of things that are opaque to everything. And, you know, the light will get absorbed a little bit by just about anything. So you, you, you can't go through a mile of glass. Now, there is an alternative. Those aren't the only two ends. There is also what we call translucent. Uh, translucent things will cause light to scatter. The easiest one I'd bring an example of would be a glass of milk. Light's able to go through the milk. If you shine a light at one end, you'll see the milk kind of glowing. Uh, but you can't see through the milk. You can't uh, get a nice clear image of it. The little fat droplets, what we call a colloid, uh, the light hits those and it will bend in all weird directions and thus the light is scattered. So while it's able to go through, it's not able to go through in any kind of order, and thus, yay, nothing particularly happens. Uh, so with that said, have a wonderful day.